Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is National Tesla Nagong. I finally have this. Woohoo! Yeah. This product that I've installed in my car is a Tesla Offer Model 3 automated frunk or electric frunk installation. We'll first go through an unboxing, a detailed step-by-step -step instruction of how to install this and we'll do a quick testing as well. This is a reasonably easy install. I'll probably rate this at 4 on 10 in difficulty scale. Now let's see what is there in this box. First up you'll see that these struts are present. So these will be the ones which will change from the existing frunk struts that is there in our Tesla Model 3. There are a host of cables there. It may look a little intimidating, but we will break it down for you in this installation video. There is the lock mechanism, which is attached to the lock motor. And there is a controller as well. Few other ties are there, which are just cable ties to make the installation nice and clean, as well as to secure the controller in the undersurface of the frunk, as I'll show you in this video. Now let's get on with the installation. After you power down your car, you need to open your frunk and then remove this top cover to access the battery. We have done this before in our reset videos as well. All you need to do is pull straight up and it's just a clip and it'll yank out without any problems. No screws installed there. The next thing you need to do is to remove the air vent cover or the air vent protector and to snap on as well and that'll snap off without a problem. The next thing you need to do is snap off this lock protective mechanism which is there just pull it up and it'll come out be careful not to yank it out right away because there is a cable for that switch that is sitting there that needs to be removed the switch is a little stubborn there's an easy way to do this there is a small little green pin there just pull out the pin a little bit and then slightly wiggle the pin out and that should unclip this particular connector and this will come free like so now there are six screws which need to be removed use a 10 mm wrench and use a long handle because the two screws in the top of this cover of this front cover is a little deep so a extender rod would be nice and then you can undo this screws here there are two on top two at the bottom of the cover two at the place where the lock mechanism is present and there's one more which is optional which is found in my car but in some cars it's not there which is in the top right as you can see here. The next step is to remove the existing strut. There is a clip at the top. Use a flat head screwdriver. Push the screwdriver's flat head into the edge between the clip and the strut and turn the screwdriver to 90 degrees to unhook that clip and that should help you yank the strut away from the existing clip. It takes a little while to do it and the crevice between the strut and the clip is quite quite small so use a small flathead screwdriver. Once you do that you'll be able to pull it out. You can see that the clip has come free over there. The next thing you need to do is to remove the existing strut pin and replace it to the one which is given in the Tesla offer box and I'll show you that in just a bit. The bottom end of the strut can be easily removed by a similar mechanism. Use the flathead screw and there is a small little space between the clip and the strut and you can pull that out like so and that. Now repeat this process for the opposite side but do have a helper to hold the frunk up. Now you're ready to replace this bracket or this strut pin. Be sure to note that there is an arrow mark and the arrow must face up. Also, the ball of the bracket must face outwards as well. Use a 10 mm wrench and this must be secured in place. Do repeat the process for the opposite side and now you're ready to clip the electric strut in position. We found that there is a little difficulty in threading the cable through so we used a flat feeder to pull the cable through. The bottom end of the electric strut fixes first. It's very simple. Just snap it on. You can turn the top part to face the ball and snap it on as well. Really simple. No screws involved over here. Repeat the process for the opposite side as well.
This is to show you how it would be once both the electric struts are in position. Next up, we need to tackle the lock mechanism. Do take your time with this one. I found that using a masking tape and marking the existing position of the lock really helps to put it back together once we finish the installation. This switch connector needs to be unhooked. There is a red tab which can be pulled out first and then the connector itself can be wiggled out without any problems. Again, use a 10 mm wrench and remove the lock from its position, like so. The next step is to tackle a large spring which is in the lock mechanism. I'm going to show you a close up of what is done here. You need to unhook the shorter stem of this spring. As you can see, there is a short arm and a long arm. You need to unhook the short arm of the spring, like so. The next is an important step. You must bring the lock bracket and motor given in the EV offer or Tesla offers box. Align the lock like so. And there is a drawstring which falls in place. You need to pull that and hook onto that small tab over there onto which the spring was there and that is the place where you remove the short arm of the string from you must put that drawstring on top of that it does not stay in place so do hold it with both your hands to stabilize it and now you're ready to replace that short arm of that spring back onto its original position so far so good As you can see, that connector for that clip that you removed in the earlier part of this video it must be facing to the left or the driver's side of the car. You must bring the lock back in position and now you are ready to screw it back in position using a 10mm screw. As you can see, it is still nice and loose. You need to push it to its lowest possible configuration and this is where those masking tapes come in handy because you can align them to the masking tapes and secure them in position with a 10mm screw like so. At the other end of the lock motor, there is an emergency release cable which is there. You need to feed it and bring it out through this sensor port. Be careful that there are some cables attached over here. So be careful not to unhook them. So be gentle with this. You can use a flat head plastic spudger to unhook the sensor door and bring the drawstring out like so. If you have difficulty, use a feeder to bring the drawstring, which is what we did here. Keep the drawstring behind the door and put the door back into position. All right, now that we've tackled all the mechanical part of this installation, let's look at the cable situation. I know there are a lot of cables, but for easy understanding, I'm going to segregate these cables as the daddy cable, the mummy cable, and the teeny weeny Goldilocks cable, taking a reference from Goldilocks. So here we see the mama cable or the mummy cable. This has the plug for the lock mechanism, which is at the bottom left part of the frunk, right about here. You have to remove the existing plug, which is here. Replace the male end of the plug with a cable from EV Offer. And connect the existing male end of the plug to the female part of this particular cable, right about here, like so. The other end of this cable attaches to the recently attached lock mechanism. One part of this cable has the female end for Tesla's existing male plug that we removed in the first part of this video. 
there are two other plugs in this cable one of which goes to the existing lock plug right about here and the next slightly larger rounded cable goes to this plug which is part of the lock mechanism from EV offer now let's look at the larger or the daddy plug this one has a large plug which goes to the controller and that is easily identifiable there must be one spare plug in the mama cable that we attached just before this and that will go into the male end of the, the daddy plug so no pun intended guys it. sorry about this the next step is to plug the strut cables to these white and yellow plugs unfortunately that particular clip of plugging the cables got corrupted i apologize for that it's really straightforward there are tags in each of these cables and it tells you where it should go on which side it should go and the plugging is quite straightforward as well now let's power up this for the first time the first cable that i want you to attach is this one it has a claw like plug to it this goes to the ground and it has a label as well it says gnd on it and this attaches to the ground right about here all right now let's leave the daddy cable alone for a bit and pick up the teeny weeny goldilocks cable this is quite easy to identify it has a black box i believe this has the fuse inside it and it has a claw shaped plug and a white removable plug it is this claw shaped plug that would go on the positive terminal of the 12 volt battery Now let's go back to the daddy cable and there is one free wire which says B positive. It has a slightly different kind of a plug to it. It's a long plug. This can be pushed into the white part of the Goldilocks cable. You can actually remove the white part like so and then push the cable from the daddy wire onto this hub and then plug this in position. Now let's plug the lock motor. There is a brown plug in the daddy cable. You can attach that to the motor hub like so. Really straightforward. It clicks into position. And now for the large mega plug which plugs into the controller it has a swiveling lock on top you have to push the lock all the way down and then push the plug into the controller and it will lock in position then you can push up the lock and lock it at the top of the plug like so and now you're ready to initialize the entire connection you need to hold down both these buttons and you'll hear a long beep and that completes the circuit and the entire frunk is now activated now to start securing everything tesla offer has given nice long ties first up i secured the motor right about here the controller can be secured adjacent the battery there's a small little crevice un underneath the battery beam and you can stick the controller there it has a double sided tape but i would i would suggest that you also use a securing tape or a cable tie to secure it in position you want to keep the controller as far away from the ground as possible because in case there is water coming in you don't want any water ing ingress to damage the controller although this particular controller is supposed to be waterproof i want it to be double safe that's all Now you can replace the front container as well as the lock hub. Make sure that the cable for the lock hub is pulled out before you put back the lock door and then attach the cable in position. It's only a reversal of 
the same steps as before really straightforward nothing to worry and that's it guys you're all done it is not a very difficult install i must say but do follow these steps diligently and you should be fine if you want to get this from EV Offer, do use my referral code TESLAGONG to get 10% off at checkout. It's a little change that you can get back from them. If you like what I'm doing, click on that subscribe button. I do have one of my cars on hire via ev.com.au x Canberra. If you want to hire them, please use the website link in the description of this video. And if you use my referral code TESLAGONG, you'll get $25 off of your first hire. So do use that before you buy a Tesla of your own. I'll see you guys in another interesting video very soon. Until then, this is Nash from Tesla and the Gong, signing off. Peace.